Scott Hamilton, welcome inside the Crazy Ant Farm, man. How are you tonight? I'm excellent. How are you guys? <laughs> We're doing fantastic, buddy. Fantastic. Why, I mean, why, why Crazy Ant Farm? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so the, the the name of our company is Crazy Ant Media. So that's where 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 the name gotcha. Inside the Crazy Ant Farm comes. Uh, you know, gotcha. it's just a play off the name of the company name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and okay. and we're crazy. So exactly. you know, it's we there. are uh, fellow <laughs> filmmakers. We just got done shooting our first film. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we're very excited about that. We're trying to get oh, anywhere and ever. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Thanks. We really appreciate That's it. Cool. Hey, it's hard to make a movie. What's the What's the movie? It's called Deadlines. Uh, it's a it's a drama suspense kind of uh, deals with a lot of different issues, man. Uh, it's pretty heavy. It's got racism and 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 uh, equality and just gun violence and a bunch of different issues that it deals with. But it's got a it's a fun you know it's it deals with it in an entertaining kind of a way and it's got a nice little twist right. ending that nobody sees coming at the end. So basically, uh, to get people ahead, to talk about the gray area in yeah. life, <laughs> trying to make people yeah, yeah. comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's right. Right. So, yeah, man. Oh, cool. Living the dream. Guys, that's cool. Oh, <laughs> thanks, man. It, it'll be available on Amazon and run the circuit, the, the film festival circuit, so we'll let you know you can watch. <laughs> All right, deal. Fantastic. We're pretty pumped, by the way, tonight because this is a, you know we, we get to we get to interview the big dog himself. So yeah. you know, come on now. <laughs> by the way, that's fantastic. I love the big dog. That was too funny, man. Too funny. But how we want to jump into this thing? Because what we like to do is just kind of tell everybody how you kind of got started in the industry, man. Was acting something you always knew you wanted to do, or did you kind of just fall into it, or how'd that happen, man? I kind I kind of got in backwards. So I, like when I was younger, I was, um, uh, I, I did like, you know, plays in school and shit like sure. that. But, uh, I, I, I was always a writer when I was a kid, I was always writing short stories, but writing them as movies. So I remember my first year of university, I took a writing class that had, uh, three parts. It was like poetry, short fiction and screenwriting. Oh. And the screenwriting thing was like, wait, what? You can do this? <laughs> Okay, right. And so I left the university after one year and went to Vancouver Film School Nice for screenwriting. Mm -hmm. So I got my education there. And my first feature I wrote won this contest. I got this agent in New York. And I was like 20, uh, 20, fucking how old was I? 22. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be rich. Perfect. This is great. (laughs) And I just just did that young, like, stupid thing where I just waited for the script to make me money. It made me a little bit of money off an auction, but nothing really. And and I didn't really do much writing. So I went back to university, finished my degree, then started doing kind of like shorts and sketches and things like that and mm-hmm. acting in them. And a friend of mine who's an actor, she was like, you need to go get an agent. You need to do this. I was in Victoria at the time, which is mm-hmm. an hour and a half ferry ride from Vancouver. And she was like, you need to go to Vancouver, get an agent, all the stuff. And I was like, uh, okay. So I did. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I, I got an agent, and then I booked a com- uh, like a commercial, like the first month, and then a TV movie, second month, and I was like, oh, this is easy. Oh, yeah. This is fun. <laughs> and then, then you go into that thing where it's like, it's a young actor, like I didn't fucking know anything. Um, <laughs> I, I wasn't even that young either. It was like, I, I didn't start acting like that. I was like 29 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, you go like a year and a half without booking anything. You're like, oh yeah, yeah. right. This is really hard. This yeah. Is really hard. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I kind of, I kind of did that and I kind of worked my way up doing like, you know, you do the one day roles on shows and movies and stuff like that. And then mm-hmm. I remember the first time, the first time I booked Supernatural, I was like five days on set and I was like, <laughs> whoa, what? Yeah. yeah. I just assumed it was a one day thing. And I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. And so then you, then you started to kind of get the roles, the opportunities and the roles get a little bigger and stuff like that until. Well, yeah, I so feel like Supernatural is a gateway, right? That thing was on forever, and like the fan base and cult yeah. from that show is huge. You get on that show, you're like, huge. no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get something from this for sure. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's huge! It's, oh, man, that show went like fifteen. Yeah, 15 yeah. Seasons? And, and the ratings were still huge for it? Yeah, it only ended because they wanted to end it. Like, the yeah. CW guy was like, we'll keep that going until they're done. <laughs> I mean, you know, so yeah. that's awesome, man. That's such yeah, an awesome crazy. story. And, I mean, we hear both sides of the spectrum, how important education in acting is in the entertainment industry and how you can just go to the school of hard knocks and learn <laughs> as you go. So where do you right. fall on that spectrum? What, is it beneficial to you personally to go back to school and finish your education for it? For, for my screenwriting, it, it definitely was. So I was at a point where um, I had done a, I had written a couple features and 
I had a thing optioned at one point. I got hired to rewrite a script that actually never shot. And so I had done a little bit of stuff when I went back and I was like, why, like, why the hell am I going back to like writing with 21 year old kids is not going to help me right. fucking do anything. But right. that was just me being naive and whatever. And so yeah. out of that, out of that kind of, because not only do you write more, but you read more. Mm. You're reading your, everyone's stuff. And then that kind of just keeps like the muscle in your brain that is your writing muscle. Definitely. It's probably a good way to describe a writer. Yeah, right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> yeah. You have to be a little this to be in the industry, man. It's like, you know. No shit. Amen to that. And so what I had done is I met some people and cultivated some really cool relationships in That's university it. and some people that I have written stuff with and still are in contact with and done stuff. So I, I thought it was really beneficial, specifically for screenwriting. I mean, I can't speak to like acting school and mm -hmm. stuff like that, right. but I think that's a bit of a different thing. Like, it's kind of, I think it's, some acting classes can be great, but yeah. you can learn a lot. But an actual school, because you can have like, listen, if you go to an accounting school, even if you're really stupid, eventually you'll learn accounting, right? right? <laughs> some form of it. There's people out there who can't fucking act. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And th you can teach them about subtext and all this shit all you want but some people just can't do it right yeah exactly so, and i mean like i think a lot of schools are filled with people who dream to do stuff like that and just aren't good enough yeah unfortunately but, yeah exactly and we talk about that too yeah. yeah exactly yeah. we talk about that as well like there has to be a point in your life where you've been doing it for so many years and maybe it's just not your thing you have to accept yeah. it you know like maybe you gotta take a step back you can still be involved in the entertainment industry in some sort of capacity but maybe you're not an actor like right. if you're 39 right. about to hit 40 and been trying to do it for 20 years maybe it's not your thing <laughs> yeah that, I know I talked to my buddy about this and he was like, the, the tricky thing is how do you tell somebody to give up on their dream? And it's like, yeah. See, yeah, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, like you said, if it's been 20 years and you've booked like two real things and yeah, one, that's right. one of them has been more than a day on set, it's like the, the industry kind of tells you. It does. Something. It does. And it's all about it's kind of a thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. Exactly. It's all about the uh, support system, right? The group of people. Mm -hmm. you, you you don't want to surround yourself with a bunch of yes people that are going to tell you to keep doing it. Yo, my God, you're so great. You're amazing. You need those real yeah. people in your life that'll be like, hey, man, you're a great writer, but you shouldn't be in front of the fucking camera. You just, you can't, get, yeah. you, know, you yeah. can't do that shit. So, so figure yeah. you need those people in your life and in, in that circle, right? So I think we talk about that too, that, that the support system that you have, you you know, because it's a tough mental game in this industry, man. I mean, you got to have some thick skin and you got to be able to deal with a lot of rejection. And, and you know, like you said, that you, you can go months and months and months and book one thing. You know, you're auditioning yeah. constantly. So if, you, if you're not strong, if you're not there mentally, you, I mean, it, you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Someone once described the industry to me. As, they're like, it's a sea of no's with a couple of yeses sprinkled in. I'm yes. like, yeah. It's very much accurate. <laughs> that's like, it. That's perfect. That's perfect. Well, I mean, yeah. you brought it up, and we're huge fans of it, so let's talk about it. Supernatural. What was that yep. process like when you first got cast in this thing? Were you just like, holy fuck, my <laughs> life is about to change? <laughs> yeah. It, it was really – well, I didn't even think that far ahead because I didn't really uh, – when did I first do it? Was I even on Instagram back then? I don't even remember. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I didn't really get the cultural relevance of the show that – like. I, but I knew it was a big Vancouver show. Right. And so, like I said, I first got it and it was like five days. I was like, whoa, fucking cool. Yeah, right. So I, got, <laughs> I got to shoot my first episode with a guy who I met who we're still buddies to this day who played like my, I can't remember if we're brothers in the show or mm -hmm. cousins or, I think IMDb screwed our credits up. They have me as like oh. a sheriff. Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. Saw that. Yeah. Which, which I'm not. I wasn't. I was one of the Wellworth brothers. <laughs> but uh, That's so much better uh, than sheriff. Yeah, <laughs> I had a weird name. It was like, Bob, 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 I can't remember. Anyway, but <laughs> it was cool. It was cool, like, doing it because uh, there came a point where it's like I was watching Jensen do his thing, and I was like, mm. I think I think I could do that. Yeah, hell yeah. I think I could do that. I mean, he's way far ahead of the game at this point, but it's like, you see how they – and those two dudes were so awesome. Like, we, you know, everyone talks about – the divas and stuff like that and yeah. there are there certainly are but it's it's kind of like any any job there's gonna be assholes right you know what i mean even if it's people that don't aren't trying to be assholes it just 
long hours, early mornings. You don't know what they got going on. They might have a young kid at home. They didn't sleep. What? They might be on drugs, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. And sometimes you know who's on drugs. <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But, but these There's guys. some breaking are exclusive stuff for us right now, bro. No, no. I'm well, just kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Probably shouldn't. Um, but <laughs> Jensen and uh, Jared were so fucking cool and so rad. And, J- and Jensen just had like, I think his kid was about a year and a half. Yeah. Um, at the time. But he was like, didn't have any attitude about it. And everyone, and that kind of bleeds down through the show. Because mm-hmm. everyone, because at that point, I think I was on season nine. So everyone, yeah. most of the cast and crew, or most of the crew had it kind of stayed the same. So everyone's kind of friends and it was a cool vibe. And it was a lot of fun. And then, you, like, I did Arrow too. And I went to that show and that was a fucking whole different scene. Oh, yeah. Imagine. Like, no, nobody wanted to be there. Oh, oh Everyone shit. fucking hated it. And it was, but I mean, at the, that show, was like I think I was in the premiere of season four, so we're three days into the shooting new season, and it does like night shoots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because it all shoots at night. Yeah. So it's right at the beginning of people's sleep schedule changing and and stuff like that, and they're behind and and it was just like I remember when I finished rapping, I was like, get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and it wasn't like it wasn't like anyone specific, like like I, I had my stuff with Steven and he was super cool with me. Sure. And we chatted baseball and he was exhausted. Yeah. It was filming up to three in the morning. And I remember, remember there's this one part where we were behind and the director in my scene, I had to like, he wakes up in a cargo plane and we've drugged him and I have to tell him to do a bunch of shit before he goes skydiving out the back. Yeah. And so I like pull my gun and I walk while I'm telling him stuff, but they wanted to do it on like two different runners. Mm-hmm. And so I had to change my angle like halfway through the walk I for one camera, but not go too far for the other one. Right. So oh, I was constantly in my head about that shit. And then at one point, like, people are getting like really annoyed because it's like <laughs> we're two hours behind. And we like, we're going to go, we're going into overtime and this is a big deal. Oh yeah. And at one point we're about to shoot and I just kind of raise my gun and do this for the camera guy. And he goes, <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't see your face, dude. If, I'm like that. You got to put the camera, the, the gun down like this. I'm like, oh, okay. Sure. No problem. Yeah, I'll bring whatever. it here. Great. And then the other camera goes, hey, man, what are you doing? Uh, you got to fucking put, he's going to knock it right at your hand. Point at his head. <laughs> oh, my what? God. And then they're like, and what's that? I'm like, uh, I don't know. Wait, should I? And Steven could tell that I was like, I didn't like, I didn't know what the fuck to do. And yeah, yeah. Or whatever. And Steven goes, hang on, Matt, point the gun here. You guys figure it out outside of that. That's what, see, there you go. Like, oh, thank God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, waiting for the cut. Matt, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Why'd you hire me? Oh, my gosh. I love that. Though. You know what? Both of those stories, though, like the, the total differences in the set of Supernatural and Arrow. But the one thing yeah. I take away from, like when you said with Jensen, it's like, hey, I, I think maybe I can do this, right? Being on a set is invaluable, whether it's a great experience yeah. or a rough experience like Arrow, right? You learn yeah. something, and, and that you yeah. can't get that in a school, or you can't get that. No. That's the kind of stuff that if you're not on set, you're not getting. And so any role is valuable, right, so to kind of get that yeah. game going. So I love hearing that. I love hearing both sides yeah. of it. Well, and also you talk to, like, people. like I've never done, like, background work or stuff like that, but I think if that's a way to – if you're really interested in acting – that's a good way to get in. Absolutely. Because when I first jumped on set, I had, I had no fucking idea what set etiquette was other than like shit that uh, <laughs> I did. You know what I mean? Right. So I, but I knew enough not to just run my mouth and go up to people and grab right. shit. And I was just like, okay, be quiet. Do your shit. Get the hell out. That's it. Kind of thing. Um, but when you're, if you work background or, or stand in or something like that, you get a really, really good sense of like what's acceptable how sets are run, how yeah. good sets are run, how bad sets are run. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like movies. You can learn a lot from a great movie. You can learn even more from a shitty one. That's right. <laughs> so, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think that's a, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Like being, like being on set is the best kind of acting. 
Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. that's a fantastic to hear, and especially for all the listeners out there trying to break into the entertainment industry. But we want to talk about the big one, the one that you're on for, Tuner and Turner and Hooch on right. uh, Disney Plus right now. Yeah, it's it huge yeah. for Disney Plus, and ha- let's start at the very beginning. How did you get cast in this one? Did you hear about it through the grapevine, or did you just kind of go into like a cattle call? Yeah, it was kind of like uh, I, was, I was shooting a movie in the interior of British Columbia, uh-huh. a place called Kelowna. It's uh, like wine country, lake country, that kind of thing. So I was shooting a movie, and I got the audition. I, I read it, and I was like, oh, man, this is right up my alley. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yes. This is exactly the shit I want to do. I love doing cop stuff. Yeah. And I like I love doing comedy. So there I was you like, go. this. And you don't, you don't get it, like, in Vancouver, you don't get a lot, there's not a lot of comedy here. There's no, not a lot of comedy not. either, no, no. So, if you don't really get the opportunity that much, I try and bring it in. When I, when I do, like, I did, I've done a lot of those, like, TV movies, and when I get cast as, like, the best friend, I try and, you know, your job is essentially, like, ex- expo dump. Like, yeah, here's exposition, basically. here's exposition. <laughs> so, I usually kind of rewrite my dialogue or try and improv it or just try and make it interesting or funny. Yeah. If that's going to be my role. So I try to bring comedy into stuff, but never actually like full comedy. So I was super excited and I, I taped, um, yeah, I taped in a hotel room. My friend Becky, she read for me and she would finish. She's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that was, yeah, this guy's for sure in your alley. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then a buddy of mine was, uh, he's a reader for the casting company. And I was just chatting to him one day about, I don't know whether we're going to meet up or, or go pitch and putting or whatever. He was uh-huh. like, uh, oh, I can't. I got to go in. We're doing Turner and Hooch callback. Like, I didn't get a fucking callback for that. <laughs> oh, <shit. No> way. <laughs> and uh, he goes, hey, let me check. And he looked. He said, oh, they haven't got to your role yet. So whatever. And because it was COVID, so I got my callback. So because it was COVID, we had to do it over Zoom. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that's, and so in my audition, I kind of improv a bunch of shit too. Uh-huh. So you do, so you do the Zoom callback, and but it's tricky, right? Because on Zoom on your phone, when somebody laughs or something, their screen pops up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so I had, and there was like, uh, I think Matt Nix was on. He's a showrunner, and Mike Horowitz is there, the EP. Mm-hmm. There's some, you know, network people. There's casting people. There was the reader, um, who was my buddy, um, and yeah, there was. It's so. And because I was like, oh, you know what? I fucking got that callback and I had improv a lot. I'm just going to kind of do something similar. Yeah. yeah. So I do it. But then every time someone would laugh, the screen would change. <laughs> Super and distracting. So my eyelines are split yeah. and it's like, it's kind of distracting. But then they were like, uh, Matt was like, okay, so this is what happens after. Just so you know, let's do it again and just give you that information. Right. And so I got to kind of riff on that stuff too. And uh, it went like, it, it was one of those ones where it finished and I went, Okay, I crushed it. If I don't get it, it's all good. That right. I did what yeah. I did. Yeah. That that's what I did. I'm happy with what I did. If they went and want to go another way with it, boom. It's out of my control. I mean, I, I gotta tell you, I absolutely love the character. I mean, it, 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 he is like the guy that you want to hate, but you can't. You can't. You can't hate him. You just kind yeah. of feel for this guy, and it's like as much as he's like a total douche, right? You're like, yeah. but but we love this guy. I mean, and you're like, I guess the learning lesson, right? Like every week, he's yeah. the lesson yeah. learned is this guy bringing something that you're gonna be like, well, that's what not to do. This guy, you know, yeah. I just and last week's episode. I, I mean, we're, we're just everything about it, it's like, you know, the interaction back and forth with, with you're making the guy sit and he's, you no, know, you just say, safeguard the cars. You're going to sit in a tree or yeah. whatever. That back yeah, and yeah. forth between the two of y'all was just brilliant. You're just like, no, that that's what I said. You're, you're doing that. And I was just dying. I mean, it's so good, man. Was a lot of that ad lib, do you have a lot of free play on that type set, like when yeah. you're doing it? Yeah, they do. And so I remember my first day going in, the first scene I shot was that boardroom scene in the first episode, like my first episode. Yeah. And so I, I kind of went, you know, it, it's a big show and all these people. And I met some people at the, the read throughs of episode two and three, mm-hmm. but I just kind of went, fuck, you know what? They hired me to do this shit. I'm, I'm going to kind of, you know, freelance improv. Yeah, yeah. And they loved it. They loved it. And so it just became a thing where they were always like, I'd always do one kind of close to the script or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. And sometimes I would go 
too much, but they <laughs> they really like they really like the banter that happens with like me and Brandon, me and Josh. So oh, they yeah. just kind of let us they let us riff a lot of times. Like that one scene you're talking about with Brandon, like they like they just kind of let us go with that. Yeah, yeah. That's and there's fantastic. one I there's one line he had that oh, fuck I wish they kept. It was so funny. So we're, I'm doing that thing where it's like, oh, you got to go, but over here, but it's the furthest part. Yeah, and I remember I said I, I go yeah, but it's the really fur, far part. Goes, the further the further the better. I'm like what? What? How is that better? <laughs> so funny, but they they didn't keep it. But it, uh, it was uh, it was good. And me yeah. like I get paired with Brandon in uh, episode eight or nine, I think. Oh my gosh, yeah. So oh. we we get we get to do a bunch more funny shit. Just how he's like, able to I, keep that straight face though the whole time is yeah. just I'm just dying the whole. I mean, how does he not oh, he, break? He's fantastic. He's de- definitely the most out of me, him and Josh. He's the most professional actor. <laughs> like Josh, Josh breaks first, and the moment he breaks, I'm done. That's it. I'm out. But Brandon can keep Brandon can keep it together. I, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. That's so freaking funny. And I mean, with it being such a fun set and it seems like everybody is gelling really well and kind of like this family yeah. dynamic, are there any like funny stories or in like embarrassing stories that you can tell us on here exclusively? <laughs> exclusively. Um, I don't, because we shot during COVID, we like we weren't really allowed to do a whole Around, bunch of yeah. shit. That makes sense. Outside it. Unfortunately, because we had even near the end of the shooting, I we kind of had organized. Uh, I had my buddy who owns a bar. We're gonna do this, rent it out and do this uh, rap party. But yeah, yeah. Then all these number COVID numbers spiked and yeah, like and eh, well that's off. So we didn't really get to hang out that much mm. outside aside from the odd beer here and there. But yeah, um, but the cat like every like that that was a rare show. Like there was no there was no assholes in that set. Like everyone was really cool. Everyone was really welcoming. Josh, Josh had to do like, like handling those dogs is, a, is no joke, man. Can imagine. Those things are fucking good. His hands after on episode three were already all calloused up and Ooh, oh, I bet. Yeah, just, I bet just from the leashes. And so this and he was in almost all the time, and he's got all the work to do, and he's doing all this shit. He's got a young kid with him up. And he was in Vancouver when we were shooting, and uh, and he, he never complained ever complain wow he always had a good attitude he was always super fun and agreeable and he was really open to and, he, and he's great improv too so it's like when we're doing something and it's like hey i want to try something after this he goes yeah fuck it let's go <laughs> and it, it's awesome hell yeah something i think is yeah. really special about this show is because you know being on disney plus of course there's like the marvel action packed but i didn't know what to expect with this one but then literally the first and second episode there's like explosions happening <laughs> there's gunfights yeah. like this is really freaking entertaining so i was really happy to see that and with that is there a lot of stunts that you get to perform or do you got a stunt guy that t- steps in for you uh both i got to do I got to do um, my own stunts, but also had a stunt guy. So the yeah. last episode where I get flipped up, yeah, I, I don't physically actually get flipped up. They shot that with a splinter unit. Yeah, but uh, I got to hang upside down and do all that shit and, and go. go up to cut my rope and stuff nice. like that. So, uh, man, you get dizzy real quick. Oh, I bet, man. Let me, let me tell you that. Um, but I got to do a, like a fight. There's like I have a fight scene in episode eight or nine mm-hmm. that's like on the in the script it was i get kicked i body check a guy he cuts my arm oh. I was like oh that'd be cool like yeah. or whatever and then a couple of days before we shot that i was on set I'm like hey at lunch we want to walk you through the stunt i'm like really it seems I don't know, kind of straightforward but yeah all right, that's it. <laughs> and it's this huge elaborate fight scene where this guy gets punched and flipped and smashed and i get roundhouse so i get in this full knife fight with this guy oh, shit. he kicks me and i was like i gotta fucking do that like, yeah <laughs> can we walk okay. through that one more time like <laughs> yeah I, I had two days to learn it but and oh actually it's pretty funny where's my phone i'll show you this um and so i a couple days i, I had it. I, I felt pretty confident in it and we were shooting it in pieces so yeah it's all good so the first, the first scene, the first bit is we go to this guy who's like in a hospital wearing a mask. I, as I mean a dude, and I get him to take his mask off to see if he's the scarred bad guy. Right. And he is. 
And so the guy goes, um, so the guy goes, the cop goes up to him and he gets punched and flipped. And I pull my gun and he kicks my gun out of my hand. And then he smashes the guy and roundhouses me in the chest. Oh, on the ground. And so it's like, okay, cool. I got this. And so he, it happens. Boom, boom, boom. He kicks the gun out. And I guess, you know, I'm, I'm not an experienced gun guy. Right. Um, I guess I got down a little bit. So he roundhoused me. He fucking booted me right in the face. Oh, oh shit. Oh. But, I, but I stayed in it. I, I stayed in it, got down, got up, and I was like... <laughs> They're like cut. I was like, ah. <laughs> uh, here, I got a, I got a freeze frame of it. I can't show you the oh, video. Oh yeah, no, yeah, we got to. Not allowed that. to. Sure, but, that makes um, sense. Makes sense. YouTube exclusive. We're trying to raise our YouTube <laughs> numbers, so if there they watch go. us on YouTube, there, there we go. It is pretty good. It's a pretty good photo. You see that? Oh, oh shit. damn! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right in the chat. Yeah, man. And so, and you, you learn pretty quickly how like. At first, because I love growing up watching like Bruce Willis movies and oh, action yeah, movies, sure. and I love it. And so I was so stoked that I was like, I'm doing my own fight scene. This is fucking rad. <laughs> After about 45 minutes, I was like, my head hurts. I'm exhausted. I've changed my <laughs> shirt three times. I keep sweating through yeah, it. Yeah. And I was like, this kind of sucks. <laughs> but Skyler, so I did all like the in tight stuff. Yeah. So I did the whole thing in tight and then. From, there's a wide which moves a bit quicker because sure. Tyler, who's my dude, is like a fucking like ninja. And so, <laughs> so, so he did it from the wide, and then we moved in for the pieces, and I did all that stuff. But nice, uh, yeah, it was cool. It was really, really, it was cool. I'm so glad I did it. I have some friends who are stunt actors. I, I don't know if I could do that full time. So hey, yeah, go to them. Kudos to them. And um, I mean, we talk about all the time yeah. how the Oscars is always back and forth whether the stunt people should deserve an Oscar. Hell yes. yes. <laughs> like, yes. yes. They absolutely should have a category, they, man. They get they smashed around. Yeah. Yeah. But look, you got that picture, though, right? I mean, so that's badass. Yeah. yeah that's a memory right there. The video is funny. I wish I could show you the video. I can't. <laughs> Maybe the, vi time. the video is pretty funny. All right, so 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 hear me out. I've got to, I've got to, like I have this theory about your character, right? I feel like no. you may just need some love, right? <laughs> so here, yeah. and now this is the writer in me. So you you be sure to pass yeah. this along if you want. But I'm yeah. thinking because it's clearly going. We all know how it's going to go, right? Scott is not going to end up with the U.S. attorney. He's going to end up with the dog trainer. We all know it. It's all where it's going. It's everything. So I'm thinking maybe you and the U.S. attorney can find a little. Uh, I feel like that's a that's a couple that could be compatible. I that think could so maybe too. understand yeah. each other and and maybe help each other out. What do I mean? I'm just saying. I, I, I tell you what. Uh, we don't have a. We haven't been green lit, green lit for season two yet. Yeah. Uh, they do have an idea of what who my character wants to date. I can't give you who, oh, shit. but they've uh, they've definitely thought about that, and I think uh -huh. it would be really fun. Uh, so, well, good, good. See, because we're thinking about that too, and uh, <laughs> I think it's a given. Hey, listen, man. I'm glad you guys are on my side. I like it. Yeah, no, we love we love it, and I think it's a given. That season two is coming, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> Completely. I, 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 uh, now the real question is though, and you're going to give us the exclusive right now. I'm pretty sure. I'm positive yes. you're going to tell us. Uh, Tom Hanks does yeah. show up, right? He's not dead. Scott 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 Senior's yeah. not dead. Come He's on, like, come on, come yeah. on. <laughs> I haven't seen I haven't seen the episode, but I would like to. I would, I would like to be in something with Tom Hanks, even right? if it's yeah. <laughs> Um But no, yeah. It, have you? Do you guys watch? Have you seen the movie? Probably. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. The original. Yeah. So I rewatched it to, before the thing or whatever because I was like, yeah, I remember it as a kid and I loved it as a kid. Hell yeah! Yeah, yeah. They fucking kill the dog in the movie. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. Like, no, it's going to come back. And she gives him the, the no. shake and he goes off to cry. And I'm like, <laughs> you just fucking kill the dog? Yeah. The, 80, the 80s, man. Yeah, the 80s, man. Fuck, fuck. Yeah, it <laughs> But they had some great yeah. shit in the eighties, though, man. That's why, right? Like, there's no way they kill Hooch, and then they kill Hooch, man. It's like, oh, what? Oh <laughs> man, a puppy. Yeah, too. It's like, it gets a little fucked up. It's a little fucked up. Oh man. Oh my goodness. How many Hooches are there on set? I'm curious. There's two main ones. Okay. So there's five altogether. Mm. There's two main ones that do 
one does like the outdoor stuff, one does the indoor stuff. Nice. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the other, they're all part of the same family, I think. That's cool. And the other ones are like kind of emergency stand-ins if we need. There's one that's really good at just sitting. <laughs> so you, 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 you might be able to notice that the one who just is, is like maybe a little smaller. Right. Um, in, I think in episode, what's the one where I do all the, I had that big press conference, episode three, I think. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. in the background, he's sitting with the dog. And that one, that one's a little guy. Okay. <laughs> I mean, still a big dog, but yeah, uh, but yeah there's, there's two main ones. I, so I just want to take that back to the beginning when you were talking about how, like, some people should just realize the same for you. So, like, if the dog is a better actor than you, <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe you should realize the no, same no, for you. Right? You're, you're like, if the dog knows how to sit better than you or he knows how to yeah. act outside better than you, you <laughs> yeah. might have a problem. I'm just saying. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the fact That's that there's stand-in dogs just cracks me up. It's like, okay. Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> That's so fucking funny, man. That's so funny. Well, listen, what we like to do at the end of the episode is kind of have a little fun with it and have our guests tell us what they are streaming right now because we're in the midst of the streaming wars. Basically, everybody has a streaming service, yeah. so there's so much content out there. What are you watching? Oh, I just finished White Lotus. Oh, oh yeah. I heard that was good. Yeah. I heard that was good. It's fucking weird. It is. <laughs> it is always compelling you're never bored yeah. okay all right and it, the cast is perfect the cast is so good in that show everyone top to bottom but it's like there's a couple of scenes where you're like what that guy's just holding his dick we're just gonna watch him hold his dick right now <laughs> fucking two minutes into the show i'm like okay and there's a couple of graphic scenes that are kind of messed up but it is uh really interesting um, HBO's calling you right now for marketing, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, fuck, what am I streaming? Uh, show wise, oh, this, I mean, I, I always watch like an episode of Simpsons before I go to bed. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's like that's a given. Classic, a given. you know what I mean? Okay, all right. That's so funny. Uh, right now we're watching your buddy and um, and uh, Star's original show, Heal, Stephen Amell. Oh yeah, man, he's doing pretty oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's. Is that good? I don't have. Do I have stars? Is that part of Disney Plus? I think it is. Uh, it's and you can bundle it with like Hulu. Yeah, um, I did. Yeah, so you can watch oh, it. Probably. That. It's pretty is good. That good. I heard that's good. It's yeah, really. It's good. It's pretty intense. Not not like like I think people will finally see the acting chops that Emil has really got because I mean this thing's pretty yeah. hardcore, man. It, so yeah, check yeah. that one out for sure. Well, he's I mean, he. I mean, he's absolutely shredded, but he's like a fucking, you know. That he's built for that role. Like oh that yeah, like yeah. Wrestler thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I watched the, the Mayor of East Town. I thought that was great. Yeah, that was good yep. cool too. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm gonna Brooklyn Nine Nine. I'm gonna get to that one. That final season, pretty quick. There you uh, go. Yeah. Any films? Any watched, films? I just watched. I watched a lot of movies. I watched. I just watched Our, Our Friend mm, with yeah. um. Casey Affleck and yep. Jason Segel and Dakota Johnson. That was excellent. Yeah, yeah. That was I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought, I mean, it's heartbreaking, but it's great. Yeah. I, I saw the Green Knight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't love it, <laughs> but, but I'll tell you why. I went into it with. If you watch the first teaser trailer, mm-hmm. yeah, it looks like a horror movie. Right, a little bit, yeah. And so the first teaser trailer is what I seen. I was like, "Oh, I'm fucking stoked for this." I love H24. Hereditary is one of my favorite horror movies the last ten years. Oh yeah. So I had about three or four beers in me. And I went <laughs> to go see The Green Knight, expecting this horror movie, and it's this really methodically paced, thoughtful allegory. Right. Oh shit. <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, I am not in the headspace for that." <laughs> yeah, you're like, "I'm not ready. I'm not ready." <laughs> So it was gorgeous. It was really beautifully shot, and Dev Patel was excellent. Yeah. But there was a couple of times when I was like, I fucked up. I should have picked a different day. Shouldn't be here. I'm kind of buzzed. It was a bad combo. Oh my goodness. That's, That's great. You just seem um, like you, you're a real fan of, of the art, right? So, like, I got to ask any, yeah, any I love, kind of. I love going to movies. So, any kind of plans to, to go behind the camera? Do you, do you see yourself? You said you're right yeah. and different things like that. No? Yeah. So directing, you yeah, ever no. see yourself doing that? I've done, I've directed like some shorts and sketches and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and then you get into like the, the big, big movies and shit like that. And you see these scenes that have like a hundred extras and 20 right. cats and the director's doing all this fucking axis angle shit. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm good. <laughs> I am good. I love that, man. Like, I love that. I'll do the writing and the acting and, <laughs> and maybe sometime down the line, maybe, but Jesus Christ. I don't, like that's a hard that's a hard job. Yeah, yeah. Also important though for all the up and comers listening and watching this, uh, know your place. Know what you're good at, know what yeah. you're not, and 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 go yeah. with it, right? So that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, we love it. We love it. And it's all about social media now. So where can people yeah. follow you at? Uh on Instagram and Twitter at underscore Matt underscore Hammer. Um, I don't have a Facebook. I deleted my Facebook like six months ago. Sure. And I, I that. yeah, I mean, I never really, but I, I keep going through my messenger app and I have so many people trying to contact me through it. And yeah, apparently Facebook Marketplace is a great place to yeah yeah, yeah i feel like, like I anybody... it back. yeah no i feel like if <laughs> anybody who still has it that's why because apparently you can yeah. get some really good deals <laughs> i mean i don't know it's but... like it's like craigslist but way less creepy yeah They're way less creepy <laughs> 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 it, you know if this whole acting thing doesn't yeah. work out marketing is yeah. just screaming your name i'm telling you man yeah, right. <laughs> it's like craigslist but far less fucking stands creepy. there with his dick in his hand <laughs> <laughs> That's a Facebook watch I had right there. Yeah, yeah right. Man. Oh, oh my God. It's free pub, Facebook. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This whole back half is publication for Facebook. I mean, That's seriously. Great. Dude, this has been awesome, man. You are just, like, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of fun, I mean, and just honored to talk to you. And open invite, buddy. Anytime you want to come back and just shoot the shit or do a top five with us. We do a top five every week on the show, so. You know, just whatever, man. Open invite. We had a blast. Yeah, this week it's um, top five fiction books, but they stay relatively uh, entertainment based. Yeah. Like a couple weeks ago, top five Leonardo DiCaprio movies <laughs> and like top five Clint Eastwood movies, like all that stuff. What are your, what are your top five? What are your top five Leo movies? Oh, oh man, man, I, we, my my number one was Aviator. So yeah, my number one was Gangs oh. in New York. Yeah, yeah, oh. so, yeah, yeah. So you know, we we we've got the list, bro. They they kind of <laughs> go like. Then we had Tom Hanks for a little bit. See, Tom Hanks could have been Turner and Hooch, but they killed Hooch. So how can you have that on the top five, yeah, right? You can't. Right. <laughs> He's got so many. How do you do, you know, just yeah. so. Uh, see, just like yeah. that, bro. We need you back on for just like that. You can clarify. Like, we'll start to give you our top five, and you're like, no. Mm-hmm. Like, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, like like I said, dude, cool. this has been a pleasure. And uh, just we thank you so much, for and uh, best of luck to you. Uh, we're hoping for season two, but I think that's a given, like we said. And uh, just thanks, man. We really appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, sure. All yeah, right, thanks, guys. guys. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome. We'll be talking to you soon. Cool. Sounds good. All right, man. See you, man. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Man, oh, man. That was freaking fantastic. Matt Hamilton was a badass. Oh, my God, dude. He is, like, just like his character. I mean, he's so fun, right? Like, that guy is full of energy, full of excitement, and... I would imagine he's that guy on set that you just can't not like. I right? agree. Like, I mean, he's just fun, man. Exactly. And especially for all you up-and-comers out there, don't be afraid to be yourself. Just have fun with it. That's what you're supposed to do. And you see it's gotten him so far in his career. Yeah, man. And, and take chances. I mm-hmm. think that's a big thing, right? He's like, you know what? I'm just going to ad-lib this. I'm going to try to make this funny and go with it and see what happens. And they loved it. Exactly. So it's all about taking chances. And if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But you got to be you and do what you do. Exactly, exactly. Thank you again, Matt Hamilton, for coming on the show.